Thank you very much. A very good afternoon to everyone. So just a very quick question before I get started. How many of you here have never used a facial mask? Oh, okay. So I hope this session will be of um, high interest to you. There will be a lot of uh, examples, of course, in this uh, presentation itself. If it gets a little bit overwhelming, no worries. We have the speaker desk outside. We can have a chat later. So to get started, what we realized is that, um, so recently in a Google report, they also tell us that from this search engine, facial mask, or we can call it face mask, is actually one of the top beauty trends for this year, 2017. So where we are here in this session, I think we are very on trend. We are looking at how facial masks has evolved over the years. It has in fact come a very long way, seeing a lot of very interesting innovations in the market. And this is where we are right now to look at the trends and also to identify the opportunities that sit within Asia Pacific where we are in this region. So before I get started, sorry, I just want to very briefly also introduce our company, Mintel, just in case some of you are not familiar. Now, Mintel is the world's leading market intelligence agency. What we do, we have, of course, our very wide global coverage. We offer very comprehensive reports, data. We also track new product launches every single day to understand the overall uh, movement within the beauty industry. With all, with all of the information and resources that we have, we also have our global team of experts, analysts, and consultants who take upon all this information to generate insights um, analysis and then make recommendations on both the consumer and the product landscape for our clients, for different business needs. Also kind of like forecast the next leading product innovations in the market. So a few things we'll cover in this session looking at the facial mask landscape. We'll first have a broad overview of the uh, facial mask or even the facial care uh, market itself, understand some of the key countries that's leading, some of the emerging um, claims when it comes to the facial mask. Then we understand from our consumers how they are actually using masks. Um, is there a difference in terms of their skincare routine between our consumers in the West and our consumers um, in Asia? Then we will go into um, a lot of product examples. We will be doing a lot of the uh, landscaping in terms of the facial masks in the market. There's all textures and formats available, which we will go through shortly before we conclude the session, identifying, highlighting the uh, opportunities that sits within this very exciting uh, facial mask segment. So to get started, this is the uh, retail market value projections for the next two years that we have seen over here. So highlighted in yellow, as we can see, China is, uh, of course, leading in terms of the size of the uh, facial care retail market itself. What's interesting to also note that uh, Southeast Asia is also making, the making into the least over here when we look at the uh, retail market value pro projections itself. And of course, when we talk about facial care, it incorporates a lot of different uh, skincare products, facial masks being one of those. And China being leading, what we can see from uh, short statistics that we have posted here, about half of Chinese millennial uh, females, the ladies, facial masks to them is actually the first eight skincare products. So it kind of like rescue them in the need of time. It gives them very instant replenishment that they actually require for their skin. Now we also see in terms of uh, looking at the very pioneer uh, format when we talk about facial masks, which is our sheet mask. So looking at the, where sheet masks actually stand, the, how, how much it really accounts for in terms of the overall global facial skincare launches from 2016 to about mid of 2017 itself. So facial sheet masks actually accounts for about 4.5% of the uh, global facial skincare launches. Looking at just uh, regionally, of course, we see Asia accounting for most of the uh, sheet mask uh, launches from what we can see over here. When it comes to the country that actually really lead in terms of the uh, manufacturing, the making of our facial masks, um, to the table on the uh, right itself, let's see if this works. Yep. So this one will tell us that North Asia is actually very strong, almost like the uh, innovation powerhouse, particularly um, South Korea itself, taking the lead in terms of the uh, launches, the manufacturing of um, the facial sheet masks over the last one and a half or even two years itself, accounting for about 41% of the global facial sheet mask launches. As we mentioned, there's all kinds of uh, formats and textures when we talk about facial sheet masks. So here on the uh, left itself, we are looking at a breakdown of different kinds of uh, formats and textures, mainly the top leading ones um, in 2016 itself. 
And of course, the Pioneer, the uh, sheet mask itself is still the leading format when we talk about facial masks, accounting for close to 20% of the uh, global new mask launches in 2016. And this is shortly followed by uh, gel kind of texture, cream, even clay kind of uh, format in the market. Now, when we actually kind of like uh, link the format with um, some of the claims that we see in the market, What's interesting, of course, uh, botanical claims, hydrating claims are still the leading one, not just for facial masks, but I think generally when we talk about beauty and personal care, um, this is not something uh, uncommon because um, the crave, uh, the desire for natural ingredients, um, hydration is also most fundamental when you talk about skincare. So very naturally, it makes as the uh, top two claims even for facial masks. But what I want to highlight is how when you look at um, towards the end, a claim like cleansing, it is where formats like clay and even scrub actually uh, takes the lead when we talk about a cleansing property kind of uh, facial mask itself. And this is mainly because when you talk about clay, it actually has a better uh, function in removing the impurities from our skin itself. So it gives, it delivers the cleansing and depurifying functions when we talk about format like um, clay or even scrub itself. Now looking across our region and what are some of the emerging claims, is there a difference or is there something in common when we look at uh, claims, when we talk about shit masks across the key regions that we are all uh, tracking? So across all four regions that we see over here, of course, again, moisturizing, botanical that we mentioned takes the lead. The ones highlighted in blue over here is mainly looking at the uh, anti-aging, even skin brightening, or even like time and speed as some of the key claims within the Western market uh, regions like the Europe region, North America region. So this is something to note because it kind of reflects the kind of uh, functions that consumers in this market are really looking for, which also have a kind of influence within the Asia region itself. So having understand um, the overall market view of the uh, facial care, facial mask uh, segment itself, we want to move on to understand a little bit about our consumers. Is there a difference in terms of their skincare routine, how they are using masks? Is there a kind of uh, expectation when we ask them about the functions they actually look for when using a facial mask? Now firstly, in terms of skincare routine, which also ultimately will determine uh, the usage of facial masks for a lot of our consumers. About 36% of our consumers in Brazil, they agree that looking after their skin at night is also very important as compared to the daytime. So a lot of us use face masks at night as well. So I think this is a good uh, penetration of uh, facial mask usage for our consumers in Brazil. Our Chinese consumers, 75% of them use sleeping masks uh, in the evening or in the night. 69% of them use sheet masks. Uh, same time of the day. So it kind of shows us that they actually prefer the lift on kind of a sleeping mask um, because it's convenient, because it's hassle free uh, for them when it comes to application. A quarter of our US consumers, what they want to see when they use facial products, skincare products, is actually very instant results. 35% of our UK consumers, um, the young millennials, I would say, they use, um, they are already stepping up on a skincare routine, increasing the usage of their products, using more skincare treatments, which include facial masks over the last one year. Now, when it comes to facial skincare usages, now we hear from our consumers in China, Close to 60% of them, um, age 30 to 39, they feel really happy after using a facial mask because it is a form of a relaxation, a little bit of like your personal time when you leave on the uh, mask itself. You can read a book, listen to music, or you can be taking a hot bath or you know, enjoying the facial mask itself. And in China, the younger consumers are usually the target audience for a lot of brands and companies when we talk about facial masks. 66% of them, the uh, millennials, again, they use multi-step kind of uh, masks compared to about half of the Chinese consumers who are a little bit more mature, where they kind of have a more streamlined skincare routine. For our consumers in the US, these are the top three um, skin concerns that they have and they will want the uh, facial mask to actually address for them, which includes things like acne, uh, signs of aging, helping with anti-aging, um, things like even like five lines and uh, wrinkles. So we also ask our consumers in China um, the functions of masks that they actually utilize. So of course, a large percentage again goes to like hydration, whitening, and this is uh, 
this is given because in Asia we kind of associate fair skin to beauty. I think it kind of uh, define what beautiful skin, healthy skin is really looking like. So one to also highlight again is how uh, things like brightening, uh, whitening again as mentioned, is actually being driven mainly by the uh, younger generation. The, uh, again, the millennials aged between like the early 20s to about, around the mid 30s. So these are kind of the, the claims, the functions that they actually look out for when it comes to the uh, use of facial masks itself. And again, this is because it equates to radiant skin, glowing skin for this group of consumers. So we move on to look at the uh, facial mask landscape itself, um, some of the launches in the market, um, breaking them down into different sections later on to specifically look at the very interesting innovations that we have seen over the years in terms of the uh, facial mask category. Now when we talk about facial mask type, the first few that comes to mind, in fact these are kind of like um, pioneers, the more common ones that we know of, is of course again the sheet mask, which comes usually in the form of paper, cloth, but of course we'll see a lot more uh, innovations later on. Sleeping mask that kind of uh, took the lead when it comes to facial mask category itself because of its convenience. And of course the rinse off mask like the clay mask for the purifying and cleansing properties. Now globally, when we look at the uh, launches, we, want, we just want to track and understand really how active in terms of launches there are when it comes to the facial masks across the region over the past five years. And year on year, what we see is that Asia is still being very strong, very dominant when we talk about the uh, facial, care, facial mask uh, launches. And this is shortly followed by the uh, Euro market. So a lot of the uh, facial mask routine has such start to actually penetrate into the West. Western consumers are starting to adopt the use of uh, facial masks. It never used to be that way, but I think with the Korean trend, a lot of trend that has actually made its way to um, the global scene itself, it has influenced consumer behaviour, skincare usages globally. And in the West, the influence also largely came from uh, a lot of our celebrities. So they took it to social media, posted selfies of themselves, to kind of show that they are also using masks, they kind of drive the trend in, to a certain extent that also influence the consumers um, in, the, in the Western market. So we have uh, celebrities like Lady Gaga, uh, Emma Stone and Drew Barrymore posting on Instagram, hashtagging Korean skincare slidiness um, as part of uh, driving the trend within the uh, Western market. Not just that, on the retail side of things, we are seeing how a lot of retailers are also jumping onto the facial mask trend and bandwagon. Sephora, they launched their own uh, sheet mask. They have a whole session carved out for just the uh, sheet mask itself or even any other form of uh, facial mask. This is again a reflection of the demand in the market, the trend in the market that retailers are responding. They have a whole session that never used to be the case uh, many years back if we look at how where facial mask is today. Likewise for uh, Boots, they also came out with their own in-house brand, again, to meet the demand um, to be on trend within the beauty space. Now, the um, purchase of facial masks is really made available very conveniently this day, so there's really no uh, reasons not to actually own a facial mask or try a facial mask. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't want to step into the store to look at the whole wide selection, you can sit at the comfort of your own home, surfing through the internet to look at different kind of uh, shape masks that's available in the market. Uh, Korean beauty brand Misha, they came up with this uh, shape mask cafe. It's not a real uh, brick and mortar cafe itself. It's really just borrowing the idea from the food category, calling it like a shit mask cafe. All the shit masks that they actually list out on their online store are all beverage inspired. So you get a lot of the drinks inspired names of the uh, facial masks within the store itself. So really encouraging uh, consumers to take, take upon the, the usage of facial masks because it's easy for us to relate uh, ingredients when, when we talk about food-inspired kind of uh, ingredients. So it makes uh, trying our facial masks a lot more comfortable for people who have never actually tried on any form of facial mask. Not just um, in the Asia, in US we have seen a lot more online stores set up just to provide the access to facial masks from Korea, Japan, all around the world for consumers uh, residing in uh, the US market itself because a lot of them cannot have access to like, the Korean mask itself. So Facetory is one of those. Um, it's not really an, it's an online store, but what's unique is they actually create a very specific sheet mask subscription box for consumers. So making it like a very regular routine to actually use facial masks uh, like on, almost like a, on a daily basis for consumers. 
Now we look at, uh, we'll, we'll be looking at a lot more of the uh, facial masks examples in the next few slides. We are breaking it down into uh, different kind of uh, sub-segments in that sense. Formats, textures, ingredients, design, function and proposition. Now starting with formats. So we have seen the uh, evolution of the facial sheet mask itself. Uh, where it first started, it was like in the paper kind of a format, but yes, of course, come a very long way as we can see from here. Now we have things like the uh, hydrogel sheet mask from US. This is a H2O water bright, water infused brightening gel mask. So it feels uh, really like a thick gel that sits very tightly and nicely on your face, allowing the ingredients to really penetrate into your skin. Charlotte Tilbury from uh, the UK also came out with this uh, very interesting dry sheet mask. So most of the masks that we are more familiar with have, of course, very thick concentrated essence, serum contained within the pack itself. But they kind of do the reverse, um, introducing a very unique dry textile fabric that has a lot of the, what they call the tiny vectors of the magic active ingredients um, put into this dry sheet mask that actually deliver the results that is long lasting for a good eight hours. South Korea came out with this uh, knitted sheet mask. So it really feels like a knitted material that again uh, allow the uh, ingredients to actually penetrate and sit onto your skin very nicely. This example from uh, New Gen Dermatology, uh, in this case is actually saturated with the white truffle moisture accents for skin radiance. A lot more of the uh, formats, fabric is coming into space um, within the beauty industry providing a lot of different kind of our functionality. So we have the uh, Go Fall Sheet Mask. So again, uh, what this one does is that it has a little bit of the uh, dermal warming kind of effect. So it kind of open up the pores, allowing the uh, ingredients to uh, again penetrate into the skin itself. Biocellular Sheet Mask, it, which really feels like almost like a second skin uh, that you actually have. So it's actually a very thin uh, layer, a very thin kind of a format that is very comfortable. You don't feel like you actually is putting on much of a sheet mask. It feels like just another skin layer that you actually have. So this one is very natural, 100% natural and made with fermented coconut jelly, a very Asian ingredient itself. So giving the skin the uh, very additional moisture booster, transforming a skin to deliver and create a very youthful and a very smooth and bright complexion. So clay mask used to be just the mix, mixture kind or the, you know, where you have to mix with water, stir it and spread it onto your skin. Now in uh, Korea, Outro, they actually came out with this uh, clay face sheet mask. So now clay mask is made convenient, less of a mess, less of a hassle. You just remove it from the pack, you can also apply it onto the skin itself. Delivering the same kind of like uh, penetration effect and cleansing and purifying uh, properties. And of course, we want to look upon Korea. Korea is our innovation powerhouse. They came out with very interesting premium sheet masks. Uh, consumers are willing to pay a little bit more because they want to have even more enhanced uh, results from using the sheet mask itself. Make Prem, this very uh, new but popular brand from Korea, they came out with this um, sauna mask. So as the name suggests, it actually has the uh, very good warming effect just like you, have, you are undergoing a sauna itself. So a one hour sauna effect is put into this 10 minutes when you actually put on the sheet mask itself. So it's actually a double sided sheet mask. One side of it is uh, the cellular sheet on the inside and the foil sheet on the outside itself. So it delivers uh, functions like whitening, firming and uh, moisturizing. Then we have from uh, Max Clinic, this is the ampule dressing contouring kind of uh, mask itself. Similarly, a two layer um, sheet mask, which includes the ampule sheet and a blaster contouring sheet itself. So giving the very strong lifting, firming effect, sculpting effect for um, 30 to 40 minutes. Then we also have Dr. Judd coming out with this uh, rubber mask. So rubber mask, I think came out about last year and it was uh, one of the heat uh, format within the facial mask category itself. So this is a, a convenient version of the modeling mask that first came out in the market. The first rubber mask that came out in the market a lot requires you to add water, mix up the solution and content and quickly apply it before it hardens into a rubbery texture. So again, offering convenience to consumer, um, doing a lot of product innovations, now taking it into a sheet mask format but for the rubber, rubber mask. More from Korea, the design is looking a bit different. Understanding that consumers today want to have that control over what's put into their product that they are using. 
So while Leach came up with this uh, Vital Go injection mask, so the packaging itself has this injection style of the ampule that you can actually pump in into the pack of the uh, sheet mask itself, the, into the uh, sheet pouch it, itself. So you know for sure the kind of ingredients that you're injecting into your sheet mask. Neozen, they came up with this uh, 3D lifting Spantex mask. So formulated with five different uh, patented formulas, um, high elasticity, three layer sheet. One is high tension, um, the other one is a Spantex sheet between 200% cotton sheet mask. So the kind of innovation, the kind of details they take into to create a more premiumized um, sheet mask is really happening. So it actually has a very good lifting effect for not just the face, but also the forehead, eyes, and even the cheeks and chin area. Medihill also created a three-step mask, so taking into a very elaborated uh, holistic treatment for our consumers that includes uh, exfoliating with a cotton pad, uh, moisturizing with a sheet mask, and brightening using a pin toner cream itself. So in one pack itself, there's actually like almost like three different kind of uh, skincare products put together for consumers. Now, when it comes to textures, it's really about delivering the sensorial experiences for uh, our consumers. And because a lot of them today like to be part of social media, part of the uh, selfie generation, a lot of this kind of textures also be, has been taken to social media uh, to have a good laugh at yourself when you look at, uh, when you put on the bubbling mask or even the uh, magnetic mask in that case. So in Korea, they also came up with uh, the bubbling mask. So it's formulated with carbonated water, charcoal powder to have that kind of a whiten, uh, whitening, brightening and even the tightening of the pores all at the same time itself. We have also things like the uh, splash mask which also came from Korea, again offering the kind of convenience where you just do the splashing and patting so it allows the ingredients to actually sit onto your skin and into your skin to give you a very instant like a good uh, skin awakening skin hydration and brightening in a good shot, like 15 seconds to a minute. Magnetic mask was something that uh, kind of took the beauty industry by storm. So it was very fun to watch on YouTube how people were demonstrating the use of this uh, magnetic mask itself. It applies on very much like a typical clay mask until they whip out the uh, magnet itself and they start to kind of draw out the uh, mask, the clay mask onto their face. So the drawing out motion kind of suggests how it's drawing out impurities from your pores, from your skin itself. So revealing a nice, younger looking, glowing skin for consumers. Now when it comes to ingredients, of course, we are always catching in on nature. We are very much into uh, natural ingredients. So here we have, of course, um, some of the very popular ones. Um, glacier water from Korea, Skin79. They came out with this uh, water tank, water splash mask itself made with um, the glacial water from uh, Alaska. So it's, it's said to actually really deeply hydrate and moisturize the skin. From China, they actually took on the uh, natural bamboo extract itself, featuring also a very fine microfiber uh, sheet mask within the pack itself. So it actually helps to sit onto the skin very nicely, delivering very intense nutrients into the skin for consumers. And in Thailand, there's this um, mud mask that is actually taken from the French Mediterranean Sea mud itself. So um, the, it's said to have very immediate uh, therapeutic cooling and very soothing effect when you actually put on this uh, mud mask onto the face. So it also helps to detox the skin, promote blood circulation altogether. Not just from the nature, um, we are borrowing a lot from the food category. A lot of ingredients today are very much food inspired. Like in this case of the uh, wheat and celery juice uh, cleanse mask itself, it's really a vitamin C sheet mask with a whitening and toning effect itself. So made with, of course, um, celery, um, even the uh, pear, avocado itself for skin protection. Watermelon by uh, Glow Recipe. So watermelon kind of uh, was the next uh, big ingredient in the market following the uh, popularity of coconut water. So some of us were saying like how uh, watermelon is poss possibly the next uh, coconut water in the beauty industry. So this is actually a sleeping mask made with, um, packed with of course the uh, superfood ingredients which include um, watermelon, vitamins and some other uh, plant ingredients like even like seaweed or even other fruit ingredients like uh, banana. From China, they actually took the uh, fermented uh, black rice as well, together, coupled with together um, the charcoal itself to help brighten up the skin to address dull skin issue. 
Now, when it comes to the proposition side of things, um, it's very interesting how a lot of mass now is also very targeted, looking at different demographics, uh, group of consumers coming out with different designs to meet the demands of consumers. Now, even our consumers in US, 52% of them are actually using face masks already as part of their regular skincare routine. So we have masks for the gentlemen as well over here, DTRT. They came out with um, the black sheet mask. So the mask itself is a much bigger piece of sheet mask, larger size for men with um, supposedly usually a bigger face than the ladies. So this mask itself helps to shrink the pores for the gentlemen. We also have masks for babies. So babies' masks are, of course, are very uniquely designed in a monkey shape, banana design to entice them. So it's only advised to apply for about good 15 to 20 minutes for the babies aged 8 months and above. And there's also masks for the whole family. If you have a big family, then this is the mask for you. 100% uh, cotton, 8 free from masks for all family comes in two sizes, the regular one and the smaller ones. There's also masks for pregnant women. So pregnant women, their hormones changes, their skin becomes a little bit more sensitive. So this is taken into consideration by some brands. So they came out with masks specifically for uh, pregnant women. Also adding glow to the skin of uh, pregnant women, containing ingredients like our uh, ray from uh, the highlands. And we break it down also by, uh, in a way, body parts. There's a mask for the hands, for our feet, even for the breasts, and even for the fingernails. So we can go into very details. Your, every single part of your body can be well taken care of using just facial mask alone. Now when it comes to the function, we are looking at how there's also very unique claims positioning to really appeal to a wider consumer group. We have masks for uh, after sun tanning. So this is uh, Garden Love Aloe Vera After Sun Face Sheet Mask. Enriched with, of course, aloe vera to help uh, cool down the skin, soothe the skin, for the skin to actually hydrate itself, replenish itself after sun tanning. Or we also have masks that can help you to sun tan. You don't even have to go into uh, under the sun, expose yourself to the uh, UV rays. This is soaked with uh, tanning serum, hyaluronic acid that revitalizes the skin complexion itself while you kind of um, do the sun tanning on your own. Some of the interesting uh, statistics that kind of show us why... Um, a face mask that actually sits into the sun care category will be of appeal. 40% of our Chinese consumers are using sun care products uh, as of last year, and this is an increase from the 34% that we see in 2015 itself. Close to half of UK uh, self tan users are drawn to easy to use self tanning products. So, products like this uh, self tanning sheet mask will actually encourage and increase product usage. Design we are all visual people. The design will actually create, again, photo opportunities for the selfie generation consumers. Um, we have hydrogel lace mask, so it sits on your skin, very nice feminine lace design. Animated mask, you have different kind that, you know, in parties, we tend to see on social media, a group of girls putting on different kind of animal masks, taking on uh, photos itself, creating that kind of bonding while doing facial masks together as well. The one on the far right, Misha, this is a glow-in-the-dark uh, face mask. So very interesting, you sit in the dark room itself, your face is actually glowing. Not in terms of your skin radiance, but in terms of the sheet mask, uh, glowing in the dark. Now these are of course what we see early on, some of the uh, innovative products in terms of the different kind of uh, segment that they fall into. And I just want to highlight a few more very interesting uh, innovative products within the uh, facial mask category. Some masks are really calling out to the time press consumers. They understand that time is of essence to a lot of consumers. L'Oreal came up with this uh, pure clay mask made with uh, seaweed. So what they say is that you can actually get your skin ready in just 10 minutes. So calling out very specifically the time frame, the timeline, the amount of time it really takes for you to actually use a uh, facial mask. Saburino, one of these are very popular facial mask brand in uh, Japan itself. This is their, one of their newest uh, night masks. It's packed in a large pack, drawing out like wet tissues. Um, 28 sheets within one pack, really encouraging consumers to use uh, facial masks every single day or even twice a day because they have the daytime mask and this is a nighttime mask. It serves as a five-in-one uh, sheet mask altogether, serving as also a lotion, emulsion, serum, cream, all packed together. And this mask only requires you to put on for a good 60 seconds. So within one minute in the night, you are almost ready to go to bed, uh, waking up the next day, expecting very nice glowing skin. 
In shower format was something quite newly introduced within the beauty landscape as well. Estee Lauder came up with this uh, in shower steam facial mask. So again, creating that kind of a warming effect when it comes to the usage of facial mask. So this uh, particular pomegranate in shower facial mask, you apply with hot water. So it allows the steam to actually open up your pores to actually cleanse your pore. The texture is very paste-like, so it sticks into your skin very nicely even while you take your shower. So you can actually leave it on while you wash your hair, um, just removing it before you step out of the bathroom. Likewise for make pram uh, in shower mask. So the whole idea is again to provide convenience for consumer, suggesting that everything can take place head to toe within the bathroom. When you step out from the bathroom for ladies, you can just apply your makeup and you're ready to head out for work, um, for whatever appointments that you might have. For people who cannot decide what kind of mask they want, then, you know, Hattic It's Pack. Tan mask will tell you exactly what time to use what mask. They have the 7 a.m. mask, 2 p.m. mask, 10 p.m. mask, and the midnight kind of mask. So very detailed when we look at uh, how facial masks have evolved um, over time, really taking into account how consumer skincare routine is like, even how their lifestyle is like. So this is really targeting possibly the uh, very busy consumers or even the uh, party animals who will need the uh, 1 a.m. Premiumization is not just premium by calling out ingredients. Um, what we are seeing some is also containing some of the aesthetic function. Now, Medihill, this is uh, really interesting. This one comes with the acupressure uh, properties and functions for consumers. So it gives um, the lifting and anti-aging effect. So very much like how you do acupuncture. So it actually hits onto different kind of uh, acupuncture point onto your face to really improve blood circulation and to deliver the uh, ingredients into your skin. LED mask, we have seen devices, um, light therapy kind of devices, the blue light, red light, yellow light, to help brighten up the skin, firm up the skin. Now this is taken into the uh, mask itself. Uh, so a reinvention of very traditional uh, facial mask in the market where we have this kind of LED light onto the mask that similarly gives you the kind of a brightening effect. Without having to move your hand around, you just leave this mask on, it will deliver the same kind of uh, results. Injection one, very similar to what we have seen um, previously where you actually get to inject the kind of uh, ingredients into your mask and of course the ingredients is looking more and more premiumized to actually entice um, the consumers. Multi-masking trend kind of uh, started um, I think sometime this year when we see how Skin Ink, a brand from Singapore, came up with this what they call the facial in a flash uh, multi-masking bento set. They kind of understand that uh, a lot of consumers, particularly consumers in Asia, have a combination problem. We, our T-zone might be oily, um, but some other parts of our face are actually really dry. And we don't know what kind of mask to really use. So they kind of address that. It's a two-piece mask. So ideal for consumers with different kind of uh, skin concern and skin problems. So you get to choose top half and bottom half. They have, I think, um, possibly nine different kind of uh, selections with different kind of functions and ingredients to address and tackle different kind of uh, skin problems. Innisfree shortly followed this uh, multitasking uh, facial mask trend. So they came out with this uh, seven different kind of uh, color clay mask to address also different specific skin problems that consumers have. So you, if you have four different kind of uh, skin problems, oily, pimple, um, dry skin elsewhere, then this is possibly the perfect kind of uh, clay mask for you where you can specifically apply to different parts of your face to really tackle very specific skin problems. And finally, we are looking at not just facial mask innovations alone, we are looking at how um, this facial mask has driven product extension where we see products that actually complement the use of facial mask. Origins came out with this, what they call the uh, maskimizer. So this is very much like a mask primer that you actually spray on, apply onto your face before you actually put on um, the facial mask itself. So the whole idea is to really to prep the skin to enhance the uh, overall mask and experience itself. We have also things like uh, devices, the make-on skin light therapy, again using the LED light kind of uh, concept. A device that actually allows you to kind of move over, over around your uh, sheet mask itself to boost the absorption of the nutrients by your skin. Now, we've seen a lot of the uh, examples. We've also understand the overall market uh, overview, understand the emerging claims in the market. So what are some of the uh, opportunities that can still be offered within this very uh, fast-moving facial mask segment? 
Now we have we have seen earlier on Asian market is really huge when we talk about facial care. We are also the biggest user when we talk about uh, facial masks itself. We have seen a lot of innovations coming out from uh, Asia region. So they are the biggest user, but they are also the um, most challenging market because we have been exposed to a wide selection of uh, facial masks itself. So to sustain the uh, consumer interest is very crucial within uh, Asia Pacific. So formats, textures will definitely continue to drive the interest of consumers and to move the market forward, especially for the facial mask category itself. Traditional sheet mask is possibly very mainstream today. Consumers are demanding for even more innovative fabrics and uh, formats to uh, enhance usage, enhance function, enhance um, efficacy. So innovative format, formats will be really important to keep the uh, interest level going for consumers and to increase the usage uh, for consumers to incorporate it as part of their regular skincare routine. We've seen a few uh, premium examples um, in our presentation today. So premium segment for facial masks is definitely um, a very potential uh, space, I would say, and there's still a lot more to actually tap on. And this is particularly important for Asia because in Asia, I think we understand that there's this micro-surgery trend going around. So facial masks is kind of like the alternative, a safer alternative to turn into for consumers who do not want to actually go into the micro-surgery um, approach and concept. They look for more premiumized masks. They are willing to pay a little bit more because they believe that Masks can actually deliver even better results, even more instantaneously for them. So they are willing to pay a little bit more, and this is where the space comes into today. And we are seeing how the premium segment within the beauty and personal care uh, category is really emerging today within our beauty industry. And finally, it's important, of course, again, to understand our consumers' routine, their lifestyle. They are, they are created for different kind of ingredients that will continue to drive the uh, product development within the beauty industry itself. Consumers are willing to uh, fine-tune, streamline their facial skincare routine, make their own skincare masks. They are willing to actually do multi-masking as what we see earlier on, or even using masks twice a day. So this actually really increases the usage of facial masks that drives the opportunities within this category itself. Western brands, of course, can adopt a lot of the uh, local ingredients to appeal to consumers who have not actually uh, started on the use of uh, facial masks. Asian ingredients are, of course, very interesting. It's generating a lot of our attention, not just within our region, but globally, really. A lot of brands are really li looking into the use of a lot of Asian ingredients, like tea, mushrooms, um, ginger, things like that. So the facial mask trend obviously has no signs of uh, slowing down. There's still a lot of claim positioning that we can take upon, formats and textures that will continue to drive um, the whole facial mask category. And it is as definitely for us to keep track and keep watching this space itself the next time when we look at the trends for facial mask category. So with that, I thank you for joining me in this session where we look at the spotlight on facial mask. Mintel is also part of the innovation zone with Incos, um Asia itself. This year's team, we are looking at stages of beauty where we look at product innovations targeting very specific demographic group of consumers. So join us later at about 2 p.m. where we will run through with you um, the different three stages that we have identified and the product innovations that sits within this um, different life cycles. Thank you very much.